It's time for Recipe of the Day. So I originally developed this Instant Pot Gravy recipe because several people in comments for my Instant Pot roasts asked if they could make the gravy in the Instant Pot. And so I developed this Instant Pot Gravy recipe. But I have to be honest with you, it is not necessarily really an Instant Pot recipe, or it's not a pressure cooker recipe. We're not pressure cooking the gravy. If you do that, if you have a flour or cornstarch mixture and you pressure cook it, it kind of breaks it apart. So we're not pressure cooking. Instead, we're using the Instant Pot here as a saucepan, essentially. So why call it an Instant Pot gravy recipe? Because you basically are doing this when you've cooked something in the Instant Pot and you have juices left in there and you want to make gravy and you don't want to dirty a different saucepan. That's basically what I'm doing here. And I actually do think this is quite a good thing to know how to do because anytime you cook any any kind of meat in the Instant Pot, you have to put some water in there to start. And that water ends up having the flavorings of whatever meats you've put in there. And so quite often, like even if I'm just doing, you know, six chicken thighs in the Instant Pot to cook up for like meal prepped, having tacos, that kind of thing. I add the cup or so of water to the bottom of the Instant Pot and I always throw in, you know, half an onion, a couple cloves of garlic. You don't even have to peel any of that. If you're going to be pulling it out later, doesn't matter. Some carrots, whatever. Cook those chicken thighs or if it's pork chops or if it's a roast, whatever that is. And then afterwards, you end up with this really, really deliciously flavored liquid in the bottom of the Instant Pot. Now you can use that as stock or broth to make soup or you can very easily and very quickly turn it into a gravy that is going to be delicious poured over whatever meat you just cooked or saved for another use. You can do that the next day and turn that into a stew. It's just very, very versatile. So I find this easiest to do with cornstarch. So this is a cornstarch gravy, although I will also tell you how to do it with flour. Now, what you want is to have about two cups of pan juices in the pressure cooker. So if you know you're going to be making this, when you start out, make sure you put two cups of liquid in there to start with, even if the recipe only calls for one. It's not going to affect anything. So at the end, you're going to have about two cups left. Sometimes some extra juices come from the meat, but that's going to be totally fine. Just start with your two cups. Then off to the side in a small bowl, you're going to mix together a quarter cup of cornstarch and a quarter cup of cold water and just stir that together until they're very smooth and mixed well. And then while stirring continuously in those pan juices in your Instant Pot, pour this cornstarch and cold water mixture in there. And then you're going to push the saute button on your Instant Pot that just treats it like a saucepan essentially. And that's going to heat up to a simmer, stir it the whole time. And once it comes up to a simmer, that is going to have removed the starchy flavor from the cornstarch and the gravy will be thick at that point. And then you can see season it up, a little bit of salt and pepper to taste, depending what you've just cooked, some poultry seasoning. I like poultry seasoning with both poultry and with pork. They just go very well. And that's it. That's your gravy. Now you can put that on the keep warm setting after that, and it will stay warm until you need to use it. Just know, especially with cornstarch gravies, the longer that they stay warm for, the sooner they start to kind of break down and thin out. So you don't want to keep it warm for that long. Now, if instead of a cornstarch gravy, you want to make a flat Flour gravy, very easy to do. I like to use a jar for this just because it's easy to shake up your flour and water slurry. So you're going to measure for the two cups of pan juices in the pressure cooker. You're going to do three tablespoons of all-purpose flour and about half a cup of cold water, or you could use stock or broth. That was true for the cornstarch gravy as well, as long as it is room temperature or cold. You don't want to use anything warm. And so you put your flour flour and your water or stock into a jar, put the lid on the jar and then shake it until it's smooth. And then you pour that into those juices in the Instant Pot and then hit the saute button, bring it up to a simmer, stirring often, season with salt, pepper and poultry seasoning, and you've got that gravy. And I will just say that you can make this gravy even if you didn't cook meat in the Instant Pot already. I'm not entirely sure why you would do this, but maybe if your stove is full of stuff or if you want to make it in the Instant Pot and then know it's just going to stay warm there, that is something you can do. To do that, you can use the pan juices from anything that you've cooked. You need two cups of them. If you don't have two cups, if 
if you got less from whatever you were cooking, then you make that up with unsalted stock or broth. And if you don't have any pan juices, you can just use stock or broth. And I'll just say, I know I tell you this all the time. The reason that I use unsalted or low sodium when making gravies is because they continue to reduce as they simmer. And as they reduce, that concentrates the saltiness. So you want to use as little salt as you can in making the gravy. And then you're seasoning it with the salt just at the very end before serving when there is less risk of it getting concentrated any further. So yeah, that's a technique for making gravy in the Instant Pot. Super easy, but super delicious. I will put the link to this recipe in the show notes for this podcast episode, or you can head to cookthestory.com slash R-O-T-D. And while you're there, if you haven't already, you can subscribe to this podcast so that it shows up in your podcast feed, whether you listen on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, you can subscribe right from cookthestory.com slash R-O-T-D, or go to wherever you listen to podcasts and search for recipe of the day there. If you listen on Apple Podcasts, I would love it if you would leave a five-star rating and a review there. That helps more people find the show, and I'd really appreciate that. Even if you don't listen on Apple Podcasts, you can go to Apple Podcasts and leave a review there as well. I look forward to reading what you have to say. I'm Christine Pittman from cookthestory.com, thecookful.com, the all-new chicken cookbook, and from this podcast recipe of the day. I hope you have a great day. Let's get cooking. <laughs>